to the stand that three would be well as we would be going for uh, a C. I think, wait. Ah, I think that's a start I prefer to the first video. Now I am going to be pointing. Uh, I realized the last episode you were made with a web browser. So uh, we'll be differentiating when I'm ranking the team. I'll be on this screen. And when I'm actually discussing their performances, we switch you over to the EHMC. So you kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, to that, so we'll start out on the EHMC while we discuss the first team. Of course, the Anaheim Ducks. And if we go over to the first, you'll see that last season, or last season, I said they were in the over point category. I thought they were doing better than their performances uh, would have expected them to. Has that continued? Well, let's have a look. So the Anaheim Ducks, uh, the first major issue for them, Bellisberger got tired. Um, that kind of showed when it came to the Red Wing game, but he's still doing well enough. Uh, Hunter Jones is now in net for the fourth sim, so we'll see how he does. So they start out the third sim, they play the New York Rangers, they were bad. I mean, there was an even game, the Rangers just have been a solid team in the East this year. Anaheim very physical, and they won nicely on the ball play, but when it came to actual 5 ball 5 ball challenge, uh, the way just had the upper hand. That was a disappointing performance. Uh, and then they played the Red Wings in a five-week classic, although they were very unlucky to lose this game. They just had really bad goaltending, and they also put a 3-2 lead. Um, one man, by the way, that keeps popping up when I look at these reviews of the Red Wings is Danila Klimovic. Because this man scored two against the Flyers, then didn't score in five games, and then got three goals against the Ducks. Like, does this man know what the level of consistency is? Um, but yeah, they were very unlucky to lose that. Uh, and then they played the Habs. Um, they actually beat the Habs nicely. Although the only concern for them is they went north for five in the power play. Which is kind of what happens when you lose your two best attack attacking players. Um, Suzuki getting on the score sheet. Uh, he's been good this year. Nine points and nine, despite the, uh, very bad contract, of course. Um, and of course, you know, Bronson right getting an assist. His fifth assist in nine games this season, by the way, which we'll discuss. Uh, how that is a later on. Do I think Anaheim, therefore, are still in the overhauling category? It's hard to tell right now because they, they had back to back, they had um, nice performance against the Red Wings, so they had even performances against the Rangers and the Habs were decent teams. I'm willing to move them on to the lower. Where would I put them in the U exist category? I'd say. Do I think they're better than Dallas right now? I mean, yeah. I don't think they've been better than the Canucks. The Canucks have had a very solid start to the season, but I put Ducks in the higher end of the weeks. Like they've definitely proven me wrong because I thought they were going to fall off a cliff this year. Uh, and their sims were not great, um, but I'll put them in there purely yeah, because they were very unlucky to lose against the Red Wings, and they arguably could have beat the Rangers on another night. Uh, and then obviously they beat the Habs. So yeah, good result for the Ducks. Now let's move back over and look at another team. Who had after the first time I said they were a high level playoff team. Um, whether or not I understand by that statement is to be seen because the Yotes are a team who are very solid and they had looked pretty solid at the start of the season. And the big result for them immediately is they shut out the Winnipeg Jets. Now, you guys know my thoughts on the Winnipeg Jets in the first two sips. So to do this in the manner that they did, this caught my eye. But 3 0 win, uh, back to back game. Wet Jets just couldn't take advantage of the power play that yet. You have to know he's just kidding the penalty kill. And the weird part is, Hendrix Lafayette. Or how the fuck is this man actually competent in Arizona? I have no idea. Then they travelled to my St. Louis Blues, having won 5 3 at home, and they were just outclassed. They went north and four on the power play. McCarthy got three fucking goals. Like, can I, can I unironically mention how good Raymond McCarthy has been? This guy had one season in San Jose on the NHL, scored six goals. Put up on plus minus of minus 44, and then the St. Louis Blues pop up for a seventh and take him, stick him on the second line, and he has six goals in nine games, and there's a plus minus of plus six. Like, why is no one talking about Wayne McCarthy this year? I don't know. Uh, then they travel the other way to Dallas. We know Dallas are a nothing special team, but they still had to get the job done. I know they don't show up for the Yokes here. Nice penalty kill, not five for five with the penalty kill against Dallas. Um, it was actually a pre-2, but then obviously empty now happened. Um, nothing too special about this performance, but they got the job done on, on the road against the slight team. Then they jumped on the way to the Preds, who have been there or thereabouts. It was a game where their goal sending could have been better. Um, Igor Golovov got two. Um, obviously, he was a big free agency slash for Nashville this year, and he's paid off. 
and he's had a 6 by 4 and he started out the season with 9 points in 9 and a plus minus to plus 6 so yeah do I think then that the Yotes are still a high level playoff team based off these performances um it's hard to tell they were very good against the Jets they were just terrible against St. Louis although that was closer than maybe it could have been Stars was nothing impressive and they did lose to the Preds so I am going to knock them down below the Canes um but yeah, that's kind of where we'll see where it's at for now. Because obviously it's going to be changing a lot based on how I think they've done it. Yeah, just play some for the jokes. Now let's move on to the Boston Bruins, who I said were very good. Um, now whether or not that statement has stayed true, we're going to find out. They played two games last time. Uh, the first one was at home to New Jersey. Uh, they were at home. It was an even game. Uh, they had a lot of penalty kills. Uh, successful uh, back and forth game. Andre Lyson was the surprise hero for Boston. Two goals, not bad. Like he played a goal and an assist. He had a two point game. Of course, having previously played for the Ducks, where he was last seen putting up just two points in twenty games last year, and I got demoted to the AHL team. So hopefully he has a big season because he was obviously a four first round pick, albeit a very bad last year. But nothing too special about that performance. But we obviously know what ability. Uh, Devils have, so they played three games off the too. Then they travelled on the way to the Canes. Um, they were a much worse team in this game, but they got the job done. They managed to win purely on the fact that the, you know, the Canes goals in and goals are absolute shit, which is not something you really expect from the Canes. Um, and they actually got an empty net of goals making five points before the Canes ended up scoring anyway, so that was a bit controversial. Then they hosted an out of four flames. They won 4 1. They were a much better team. Um, one for four on the power play, two for three on the penalty kill. Pasternak, Blitzen, Laken, and Powell was on there, also, but they had a nice game. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm willing to keep Boston in um, cup level. You could say that maybe they were disappointing against the Canes and they lost to the Devils, but the Devils game they could have won, and the Devils are obviously a solid side. They just need to fix their goal issues, and they'll be quite good. Um, and Canes are a very solid side. And yeah, unfortunately, I've got Felton, maybe, but they still scored five, uh, and then they beat the Flames and Devils fast. So let's move on to the fourth team. Buffalo Sabres, who I'm keeping in high level cups here, just so I don't get back. So we're moving on to the Calgary Flames, who were really needing a big set, or else I would have really dropped them hard. And did they were, we obviously know how bad they got against Boston. Uh, they beat Columbus uh, 5 2. Not going to look into that because Columbus is just been passing this year. Then they played the Sens. Uh, their penalty kill really showed here, and they had really good goals in it with Lopez. They had no right to win this game. But they got it done. I think the quality against a team like the Flames just kind of showed that the Flames. Uh, and then obviously they played the Leafs right on the way with 1 2 0. Um, got a power play goal early and then just kind of sealed it late on. Matthew Sakonati with both goals and assists for them. Uh, it was an even game and they were probably lucky to win 2 0. It seems like their um, quality is fading them out more than actual performances. So, um, yeah, I mean, bad performance against Boston. Uh, not as good wins as they might first seem against both Sens and. Uh, Maybe all these goaltending really fading them out there. So I'm going to keep Flames at the bottom of the 8th seed. I'm still not convinced of anything special. Uh, let's move on to the next team. Which is the Carolina Hurricanes. Who of course have a trying uh, very interesting strategy this year. They call it fuck them defense. Um... And of course, they have played three games this sim. The first one was against Boston. We obviously knew they were unlucky to lose that per se. They then travelled on the road to the Hawks. Uh, they should have won this game comfortably. Uh, Paul got a three goal game and they had to come from three to one down with five minutes to go. But they got the shootout done eventually. It was a game which they honestly should have won at 8 1. Uh, and then they played the uh, Oilers at home. Not a good Oilers team, and they gave up far too many shots on goal, but their penalty kill was very nice. They got a power play goal as well. Um, so. Yeah, very nice sim for the Canes. Um, unlucky losers for Boston. They should have easily beaten the Hawks. And then went against the Oilers. Um, should have a very nice penalty kill. So, for that. Um, yeah, I'll keep them in the high level playoff team. I think that's fair enough. Um, I think the penalty kill is a big thing that can help you in the playoffs. And they also have shown they've got a really nice ability to get shots away. But obviously they are going to be doing a bit. I, I think they also just had an unlucky sim due to the fact their goal setting could have been a bit better. But, yeah, definitely need to add. There, so let's move on to the Chicago Blackhawks, who have been pretty terrible this year. 
But hey, how have they done? Are they still just a team that exists? Uh, obviously, we saw them play the Canes, and they were useless. The only other game of the Sim was against Tampa. Uh, it was a 5 2 win for Tampa, but it really wasn't as good as it looked. Tampa, um, Portsmouth had really bad goal sent in. Uh, they already got into the game. So, yeah, I, 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 sorry, Hawks. I can't leave you in anything more than a bottom tier. You exist, team. Um, you, you are a team, and you do definitely exist. Colorado. Now, I needed to see some big sims out of Colorado, because they have not convinced me on the eye. And they started out playing against Tampa. Uh, they were the better team. The big concern for the Avs coming out of this game is they went one for six in the power play against a bubble team. Which is, like, fine, but, like, they should have got two or three. Wait, I mean, at a minimum two against a team like Tampa. And they also went two one up and then immediately threw it away within, like, three minutes and then just didn't score in the third period. Then they played, obviously, Mike St. Louis. It was a 4-3 overtime win. They were the better team that day. But again, the power play north for two, so that's one for eight on this sim. Is a concern, uh, but they got, obviously, a nice overtime winner. Uh, and then they played against the Hot Sharks. We know the Sharks are not good, but they absolutely dominated it. But again, not one power play. Um, so that's one for nine on the power play. That means they're only 19% on the power play this season, um, which is a huge concern. If you look at their special team power play goals, like, look down the bottom, you can see them there in... Oh, well, yeah. Okay, to be fair, they're 30, but their percentage is not great. Uh, Panthers, again, I mentioned their power play last time, we'll discuss it later, but that Panthers power play is looking really good. Um, despite being the worst team in the league, by the way, the Columbus Blue Jackets still have a better power play than the Islanders, the Rangers, the Yotes, the Jets, the Blackhawks, the Sens, the Caps, the Leafs, and the Sharks. So, clearly, the Jack Blue Jackets just need to convert their form from the power play into anything else. So, where would I whack the abs after that? Power play is a big concern, but they got a nice one against St. Louis. They were solid, but nothing special. Uh, hold on, I forgot they were playing. So yeah, they yeah, so they lost to Tampa. Very disappointing that day. Uh, but they came out there and beat the Blues, and then obviously made light work for the Sharks. I'm willing to move them up ahead of the Pens. I'm actually going to put them ahead of the Habs, just because I know what quality the Habs have got, but it's a worse sim than the Yotes and the Canes for sure. So I'll, I'll move the Habs up into a mid-tier playoff level team, but I still have not... Like, they had a nice win against St. Louis, and you could say that's their big win. But, I don't know, I need to see them make lighter work of teams like Tampa. You know, like the Hawks, like the Oilers, like the Caps even. Where they keep going to shootouts and overtimes. Or losing it by one goal. They've got to start turning those one goal losses into one goal wins. And that'll be really good. Next up, we have the Columbus Blue Jacket. Who are in their own special tier for a week. They're not in 10, and I have nothing to add. Dallas. Okay, now I put Dallas as a higher tier UXS team just because I thought their performances were not bad, especially given they beat the Pens. So actually they respond by losing every single game in this sim and getting dicked all over by Pat by the Florida Panthers. Although they did manage to kill both Florida Panthers power plays, which actually just mentioned is a big deal. One thing they keep getting popping up by the way is how good Aiden Castle has been this season. Like he had a really good season two years back, and then last year he kinda of fell off a bit. But this year, he's got 8 goals in 9 and got 11 assists. Although, you could also argue that's what happens when you play on a line with Carl McDavid, who's got 16 points in 9 games this season. Motherfucking McDavid is like 80 years old at this point, and he is still the best centre in the goddamn league. Like, seriously. This man on a line with Gretzky would just walk the entire league by themselves. Then Tampa played him against a bubble... Uh, sorry, not Tampa. Dallas played him against a bubble team in Tampa. Even game, they got an early power play goal. Couldn't see it out, and ultimately they lost it over time. But that's not a bad result. Tampa were a bubble team in the East, and we know what kind of quality Tampa have, and they have a lot of potential. Then they played the Yotes, and obviously lost that game 4-2. It was an even game, but they were terrible on the power play. They didn't get themselves what was all out of this. But they weren't horrible, they managed to hold the road against a good Yotes team. And they had a tough sim, to be fair. I mean, they had to play two good teams in the Panthers and the Yotes, and hold the road against Wild Oak, and then obviously had another time loss against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, would I keep them as a higher tier Yotes this team? I think I still am. I still think their performances were not useless, and I still definitely think there is potential in this Dallas team um, if it keeps improving that they are not as bad as they look. Um, they're just unfortunately having a really tough start to the season in terms of him. You know, in their first nine games, they've had to play the Canes twice, the Devils, the Rangers are a bit of a surprise package, the Pens, the Panthers, a nice bubble team in Tampa, and the Oaks. And the next sim is not going to get much easier because they've got to play both the Avs and the shot and uh, the blue. Now after that, they do get a nice amount of couple of games to be fair. They make six so against the Sharks, the Blackhawks twice, the Caps twice, they also play LA. In fact, even after that. In fact, yeah, their November will really kind of tell me where they're at because in November, I mean, you can see it here. Hold on, if I... Yeah, 
You can see it. They're playing the Sharks. They've got the Hawks twice, the Caps twice, they've got the Kings twice, the Oilers twice, Anaheim in there. The Sharks again late on in the month, and the Canucks. That'll kind of tell me if I'm right about Dallas, but I think they'll be solid. Like, I think they'll be, like, about about 10th come the end of the season. Like, they won't be near the playoffs, but they'll definitely have shown they've improved as a team. So, next up on my list is the Detroit Red Wings, who I put as a sort of mid-tier Euroxist team. Um, and looking at their results, I think I'm going to potentially be changing that. So, they started out on the road against the Kings. Uh, they were awful. Um, they got a power play goal in the first, and that was about where it peaked. Van Horner got two goals in the second, and it was all over. Uh, Christie got two goals as well. Charlie on the way to get to a pretty average Oilers team, and they lost that, but they held their own, and ultimately they were just beaten. Um, then went on the road against the Ducks. We know the Ducks are not great. Uh, they were fortunate to win this game, but came back from behind to win. And then held, hosted the Flyers. Uh, they won this game 4 1, but it was a game where the Flyers' goaltending made this a lot worse than it should have been. Uh, Detroit only had 25 shots and goals scored four, so yeah, they were. This was a really weak sim from the uh, Wings by picking up two wins. So yeah, I am gonna leave them in that kind of lower tier U exist team. I don't. We'll see if Wild will improve. But I don't think from what I've seen previously from the Wild they're good enough. I don't think the Sharks and the Black Horse are doing anything this year. It's just another mess sim from a team that's clearly trying to rebuild and get some nice picks in. So let's move on to the Edmonton Oilers who. I have put as a kind of lower tier wildcard team, I think if maybe they catch fire, so it could happen. We obviously saw them beat the Red Wings, that was a close game, they did it, and then obviously the mandatory win against the club, the Blue Jackets. Then they played the Canes back and forth game, but the power play sucked, and they were also punished by the Canes. Not really to add to that sim for the Oilers, it was kind of a nothing sim, they got a win against a team they should have, lost to a team that, which could have gone either way and then picked up a mandatory win against the Tanker, so... Yeah, I have nothing really to add for Edmonton. I wouldn't really say it was enough to boost their performance, but I wouldn't really say it was enough to destroy it. Like, they didn't do badly this sim. You know, they took the Canes to a shootout, they beat the Red Wings, and they beat the, well, uh, Blue Jackets. So, let's move on to a team that I think, honestly, right now, could be scary. The Florida Panthers. They started out this sim, Fumbling Dallas 5 0, one of the most comprehensive victories I've ever seen. Castle and McDavid are just on fire this year. I don't know who else is on that line. Yeah, Zimmer. To be Zimmer down the right. He's only he's got ten points in diamond. So Florida's top line is catching fire in a big way, and that's kind of what you want. Then they travel to Nashville, a solid side, put thirty six shots on goal against them, and scored two on the power play. They were five 0 up at one stage. Like yeah, you could say their goal saving was good, but you've got to have good goal saving. Uh, and then they hosted the Wild. This was probably their weakest performance to the Sim. They actually bought a three one lead, um, and it was kind of a different. Point. Play the performance, but they can't make power play goals on David and then one in the shootout. Um, so you can't be fault them, every team is going to have an off day. Um, and it also shows they can actually win a shootout because obviously they lost one uh, early on. I'm actually going to move Panthers into a playoff team. And do I think they're better than Boston? Or do I think the Panthers are better than Boston? I'll say, I'll, I'll say lower cup level. I don't think they're better than Boston, but it is very close. Moving on, we have the LA Kings. Now, LA, you may remember, I put an under performance. I thought their starts of the season had not really shown how good they did. So naturally, they go on a fucking four game winning streak afterwards, battle the Red Wings, take apart the Rangers, take apart the Sharks, and then beat my Blues in overtime in a row. Although, yeah, um, so yeah, LA kind of proved that I was right, and they weren't just having a really bad start of the season. Um, so I'm going to move out the end of the win. I'm going to put them into the wild card here. And I'm going to put them ahead of the Tampa. Like, of this sim alone, I'm putting them ahead of Tampa. Actually, because we don't really know if the Kings will be consistent, I'm going to move them below Tampa, but I definitely think their upside is better than the Oilers. And they've done more than the Oilers have all season with that one sim alone. So... Next up we have... a sort of wild. Oh, I mean, they have a solid set of holes, they play better than the Panthers. Um, Flyers one's a bit cool. Okay, so we're back for part two, sorry about that. Uh, interrupted, so, where are we? Oh yeah, so the Flyers. So, we talk about, oh ah, yes, the Wild, now. The Wild, yeah, I mean, they, they did okay here, they won nicely. Uh, played the Pens, won that. They look pretty good together, though. Um, outclassed Pens, uh, they obviously had a tough year against Panthers. So, I'm going to move them around, 
And I honestly think here that the Wild are better than both the Flyers and Detroit right now. I mean, that's still alone to prove that they are a solid team. Um, don't think it's any more to be you exist because, well, they only had really one good game. I mean, yeah, they beat the Pens. So maybe you could say they're like, uh, maybe well, I'm a wild card team. But I think that's a big jump right now, especially after the first two sims. So moving on, we have the Montreal Canadiens, who, of course, looked pretty good early in the season. Did that translate? Let's find out. So a big injury for them. Kirby McNish picked up an injury after Sim 2, uh, Sim 3 even, and Tobias Bjornfort, who had played 7 games and put up 2 points, also picked up an injury. So they started out their Sim going to a shootout on the road at Buffalo, which they lost in a game they probably should have won, but they just couldn't take advantage of the power plays, blew a 3-1 lead, and they eventually lost their injury out. Hosted the Leafs in a good old fashioned Haps Leafs game, went 4-0 out, won the game 6-3, but to be honest, they won this because the Leafs goaltending was just an absolute disgrace to the entire league. Um, and then they came out of that game, traveled on the road to Anaheim, who we have discussed are not that good. As mentioned, Anaheim were very good that day. So I'm honestly tempted in my actual ranking to swap the halves. Like, I still think the halves will be playoff level, especially how, you know, open some of the teams are this year. But I think they're definitely, at this stage, um, lower playoff level. But they did have some nice early season performances. So, I think I'll leave them in there for now. Moving on, we have the Nashville Predators, a team who I have mentioned are doing something. They had a couple of games with Sims. They started out playing against the New York Islanders and the West. Not a good Islanders team, but they got the job done there. Uh, two empty net of goals made this look better than it was for them. 3-2 uh, win without that is a nice performance regardless. Then, obviously, they had that absolute embarrassment against the Panthers, where it was more a case of the Panthers absolutely steamrolling them than anything else. And then, obviously, played the Yotes in that 3-1 win, which was a nice result, although the Yoke's bad goal sending probably helped them out a bit there, but they still look solid, um, nonetheless this sim, nothing special, but they look okay, um, so I'll put them above the Maple Leafs in the HCT tier, but I still don't think they're anything else higher than that at the moment. Moving on, we have the New Jersey Devils, a team who I said just needed to stop giving us as many penalties and, you know, get Anaheim, um, my brain died, hold on. Anaheim, Portillo back. They started out playing on the way away at Boston, a team who I think are very good. They matched the Bruins, but they went 1-4 for in the power play. Um, drew the game 2-2, one in the shootout. Nothing special. No, it was a good performance, yeah. Then, obviously, they got their mandatory win against the club with Blue Jackets. Then traveled, then played against Buffalo. It was a wide-open game for both teams. They blew a 4 They blew a 3 nothing lead. That's a poor result for them. Um, but at least Portillo came back to form, even if the whole fucking defensive structure... Collapse. So where would I put New Jersey? I do definitely think they're now in the eighth seed category, and I think they have shown more than Calgary. Uh, Maple Leafs not yet, but yeah, I'll put them lower eighth seed for now. I think this sim definitely showed that they are beginning to fix some of the major issues, but we'll see if that stays consistent. Islanders and Rangers next. We're off to New York. We'll start with the Islanders, a team who I have said don't look great. They've got a lot of injuries. I also know about uh, Rose and uh, other names. Well, Sheshin got injured. Uh, Joshua Boulanger, who had started up the season with four points and six, has also got injured after Sim 2. So, yeah, they got some big issues. They start up this uh, two game Sim for them, playing the Preds, where we obviously saw they were just not good. Uh, and then obviously traveled to the Jets, who we know are very good. They were outclassed, went north of five in the power play, and still got outshot by 16 goals. So, yeah, the Islanders are just not good this year. Um, I don't know where I put them. I put them as the best U.S. team in the league. I mean, given how they've now conceded um, 13 goals in three games against the Panthers, the Preds, and the Jets in, the, for, in five days, I am going to switch them around with Vancouver. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put Anaheim above Islanders, but I still don't, yeah. But I'm willing to drop the Islanders below Dallas, but I'll leave them ahead of Dallas just because they've had a rough couple of games. Um, and we obviously still don't really know what those limitations are for Dallas. Moving on, we have, of course, the Rangers, who I still have had a very nice start to the season. Um, they've actually only played two games this sim. One was on the road against the Ducks, which was a nice win for them. Nothing's fancy. Then, obviously, they got crushed 6-2 by the LA Kings. They were never in this game. They went one up early, but LA immediately equalized off the power play, and they, they were just miles better. So, yeah, where do I put Rangers? What, like, bottom wild card here? Um, yeah, I'm willing to stick with that. We still don't really know what their limitations are. They've had a fairly nice start to the season. 
Um, but I still think there was upside in this group of players for sure. So I'm going to stick with my rankings for the Rangers. The Senators were a team who I said were just massively underperforming considering how they actually played on the ice. Um, and they then go ahead and win their first game of the season. 6-3 against the captain. A very nice player went to do. Play the power player went 6-0 at one stage. Very nice performance from them. Big man of the game was none other than Eric motherfucking Blackstrom. He put up a three-point game from the blue line. Brilliant game for him. We obviously know how good he could be for Ottawa, but he's had a slow start. He got some points on the board here. And then they played the Flames at home. At home. They were unlucky to lose this game. Um, so, yeah, I'll need to win the end of the week. They are definitely good if they can just, you know, actually start doing as well as they performances suggest they can. So, let's discuss the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, I said the Flyers were just kind of there. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, there's some kind of proof here. I don't really look too beyond the surface to know that they are still just a team that exists. Um, why do I put them in my ranking? Yeah, I'd stick with that. Um, I think that's fair enough. I'm going to then move on to the Pens. Now, I haven't been blown away by the Pens, and I wanted to see some big skills out of them, but they just didn't deliver. You know, they lost a tight game against St. Louis. They were awful against a not great wild team. Yeah, they were on the road away at the Caps. It was a nice performance, but they were mainly held up by their power play, which went 3 for 5 on that day, and they only killed one or two power penalties. So, Pens are still not convincing me. Like, they they got hyped up a lot. I mean, I'm still going to put leave them in that spot of a playoff level team, because they clearly have the ability to do something, but all I've seen, they, they can't be any higher than a low playoff team. Simple as. Next up, we have the San Jose Sharks, and they changed their ranking. This is fair enough. So that's why St. Louis, do I think they're better than a high level HC team? Well, their sim was going to reveal a lot. They beat the Pens, we obviously saw they were pretty good there, but then battered the Yotes 4 1. Close game, but they've done well to win there. 3 1 in the end. Uh, overtime against the Avs, not a bad result. The Avs were better, but the St. Louis clearly showed they are like, capable of going toe to toe with a team of that quality. Uh, and the Kings display. They weren't good, and they were terrible in the power play, but hey, they did whatever. Yeah, I'll leave them as um, I mean, if the argument of they have the talent to do something, but they're not showing it, is starting for the Pens, then it's starting for the Blues. So, I'm moving them into a low-tier playoff team, and I think they have a better upside than half, so I'm putting them there. Next up, we have... Tampa. So I said people are just a bubble team, that's kind of where they are. Actually, in the playoff spots, all the early days, people are still playing uh, the games. They actually won the three game win streaks. Beat the Avs. They were no, <laughs> not good enough to win that game, but they won. Went to overtime against Dallas and won in a game which, yeah, they did well to win. Uh, and then obviously the Hawks, not a good team, but they made fairly well. They got three lucky for five goals and didn't get outside. Yeah, when I put Tampa, I put Tampa as a higher tier wild card. I'll switch them in the Kings around. I still think they got a better upside than the Oilers, but I don't think they got a better upside than the Kings. Next up, we have Ooh, games lock already. <laughs> Toronto. Yeah, they were. I mean, they started off so amazing. They beat the Bruins three one. Although that was a game which they were very good. They just couldn't convert the power play. Then we saw their Habs game was unlucky. Then they got shut up by the Flames. But that was more a case of the Flames great goaltending more than anything. So yeah, the, I know I sort of just there sim for the uh, Leafs. I put them as an AFC team. I'm gonna put them down on the lower tier AFC team, um, just just based off that sim. We then got only a couple more teams to discuss. The Canucks, who I don't think I really need to change my opinion on, do I? Uh, yeah, they're still definitely a you exist kind of team. Um, nothing really to say there. Do I think they're higher tier? I definitely think they are. They have the massive potential. Um, then you've got the Caps, who had a nice looking start to the season, but they kind of fell apart this sim. They conceded 6 to an out of form Sens in a game where they were just not good. They lost to the Bruins where they were not good. Uh, and they lost to an out of form Pens where they just weren't good. I put the Caps in wildcard, didn't I? Uh, I think we saw maybe got them exposed, but I'll put them, at the, I'll put them ahead of the Rangers, but yeah, I think they definitely fell off that sim. And the last team is the Jets. I don't think I really need to change my opinion. I still think they're the best team in the league right now. Um, 
they sort of had a rust in. They lost their first game of the season against the Goats. They got shut out 3-0. Uh, but they were very good. And that was just a game where the Goats had good goaltending. And then they beat the Islanders 4-1. So, yeah, I still think the Jets are the best team in the league. Um, and I have nothing else to add. So, yeah. That was that.